with great regret, I have not been back to Iraq since um, mid-2006 when I was there for the film. But uh, I stay in touch with many people, and, and just about everybody with whom I speak says that the corruption problem uh, has gotten notably worse since 2007 and continues to get worse. And the society is really, in many ways, uh, approaching breakdown, even though by some measures, some very real significant measures, it is improving. But if you're a woman we, we, in Iraq... Mr. Jack Keen explains a situation where people couldn't go to school, they're going to school again, they couldn't go shopping, they're going shopping again, which does not sound like a society that's breaking down. It sounds like a society that's knitting together. I, I think both are happening at the same time. But, for example, have any of the refugees returned? No. In fact, yes, there is have. a very that's small number. There is, a, there is still a net outflux of 10,000 per month. What about that, Fred Kagan? I'm sorry, that's just false. Refugees have returned. If you say, have any refugees returned, the answer is yes. A tiny number. Say, On a net basis, have, they are still leaving. Are people leaving? That's fine. We can have that conversation. But there have been refugees returning. There have been IDPs returning as well. This is a process that, has been, that is ongoing. And I'm sorry, you have, to, you have to recognize that. This is not the case where people are still fleeing the country in droves and that's all that's going on. You've got movement back and forth. One of the most important things that's happened is that key leaders in Anbar who had fled because of the Al-Qaeda violence have returned. That was a key element of the Sakwa. They have come back and taken up their traditional positions in society, which is one of the things that has allowed the creation of a new political dynamic in what had been the hotbed of the Sunni insurgency, and they are now participating in the Iraqi political process. Those returnees may be small in number, but they are incredibly important for the future of the country. As your moderator, I'm, I'm hearing not just a difference of opinion on interpreting the facts. I'm hearing a difference of opinion on what the facts are. For example, the question of electricity. Either there is more electricity than before or there isn't. There Wh is. Which is it? There is. Oh, hold on. There Let's is. Just get this in perspective. No one Sir is, Malcolm Rifkin. No one is, I think, suggesting uh, that there is more electricity than there was before this war began. No, All no. that Mr. Kagan <laughs> and, and General Keene are saying is that the war which we were responsible for creating, which destroyed Iraq's infrastructure, which destroyed its schools and its hospitals and its electricity and drove millions of people abroad, all they are able even to claim is it's now beginning to go back to what it was before we started this war. Now, if that is the culmination of this uh, terrible five years, it's not exactly something we can be proud of. That's not, that's not what we're saying. Fred and, that Kagan. Is not the, and that is not the case. Electrical generation and transmission in Iraq is higher, in fact, significantly higher than it was before it, the war. It, it is, in fact, it, that is true. It, it is, I, I'm sorry, I, I did make one misstatement. It's about 30 percent higher than it was before the war. Charles Ferguson. Most other indicators, most other quality of life and infrastructural indicators, w the availability of water, the um, availability of sewage treatment, the availability of education, et cetera, remain enormously below their pre-war levels. We have several hands up, and I want to bring the audience into the conversation. I thought there was, this was supposed to be a debate with two speak, people speaking for the motion and two against, but we've had four people speaking for the motion. Uh, the point is that uh, Mr. Ferguson and Sir Malcolm have said, you know, that things are getting better, and if that's not a step towards winning, I don't know what is. I think that uh, Mr. Ferguson and Sir Malcolm have, uh, are debating not a question that, that's asked tonight, that's on the board. They're debating so a question. What, 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 and the question I question. want to ask them is, do you have uh, any argument to show that America is not winning the war right now? Sir Malcolm. If you mean winning the war means gradually getting domination over the insurgency, if that's all you define as winning the war, I happily acknowledge that. And I said earlier, all wars eventually come to an end. And if the world's great superpower is not able to beat some insurgents in Iraq in military terms, it would be a very strange situation. But winning the war means actually achieving the reasons why you went to war in the first place. And by that definition, which is the only meaningful definition, no, we are not winning the war. It remains a total disaster for the people of Iraq, as the hundreds of thousands who have lost their lives or who have been injured in this war would happily testify if they were alive and able to do so. 
I, I, th I thought that both of us made it clear that uh, we thought that this war had discredited the United States in the Mideast and the entire world, had left Iran stronger, uh, had pinned down the American military in Iraq so that it was unable to deal with uh, Afghanistan and uh, Pakistan and uh, a number of other issues. I, I, I thought we'd made that fairly clear, actually.